2018 season is presented by Sightbox. There's a buzz about in Portland this afternoon as the Timbers return to Providence Park for the second to last match of the regular season. Their final one at home, and they have a chance to clinch the playoffs. Their opponent, Real Salt Lake, can also clinch the playoffs today. This is their final match of the regular season. It's the Timbers and Real Salt Lake, a massive one on the penultimate weekend of the MLS season from Providence Park. Here are the Western Conference standings entering today. All teams will kick off simultaneously. The Timbers in fifth place, Real Salt Lake in sixth. Again, Salt Lake the only team playing their final match today, this weekend. So here's what it means. The Timbers can clinch a playoff spot today with a win or a draw against Real Salt Lake. Even if they lose, they can be in if the LA Galaxy lose or tie at Minnesota. Timbers to improve their chances at a home playoff match, though, really want to go for a win today. Jake Zivin, Ross Smith here with you at Providence Park. Nat Porchers will join us as well. Ross, it's been almost eight months of the season, two games to go. This is the final one at home for the Timbers. Uh, it is as exciting as it gets. And a big reason why for the Timbers is how well they played in their last match. It was the best performance of the season. It's the most amount of goals that they've scored all season long. And a big reason why they played so well was all the different associations. The partnerships just seemed to click. But for our results, it's about readjusting today for Timbers. It's rinse and repeat. Here are, is the point desk starting 11 from Giovanni Severese. And the Portland Timbers just one change from that team that beat Salt Lake 4-1 to two weeks ago. Liam Ridgewell back in at center back. The attacking front four that scored four goals stays the same. And that attack, it was humming along. And a big reason why was the understanding amongst one another of what one another were doing and the spaces they were getting into. If you look at the first goal, when Sebastian Blanco gets on the ball, even though there's all these defenders around them, Diego Valeri, he knows he's got to make a run towards the goal. Same with Jeremy Abobashi. He knows he's got to make up that ground at the back stick. And for Blanco, capable, even with players around him, he can put in that cross. It's in an awkward area for defenders but for a boba C it's nice and easy for him just coasting in that, that back stick and that understanding Diego Valeri finding himself in that pocket the Timbers know keep getting him on the ball in RSL they can't get a sniff a boba C popping out gets Valeri in space as Brooks Lennon having it tuck in and now Blanco he didn't get involved he's waiting for his turn he's waiting for his chance to arrive at the party and when Valeri sees him coming in off that wing he just sets him on and Blanco top in stunning goal from an attack that is humming along here's the point test start Starting 11 for Real Salt Lake. They played New England, beat New England 4-1 to one on Thursday. They've made six changes from that group back to a similar group that the Timbers beat two weeks ago. Just two changes from that one. And I think one of the biggest changes, Jake, is with Sunday. With Sunday, they call him playing in that central area. He partners well with Beckerman. He gives that defensive midfield more mobility, getting around, breaking things up, and then crying like going up into that false nine position. I say false nine because he'll like to come into that midfield, get his foot on the ball, and look to combine and give the RSL attack some possession. Let's now bring in the third member of our broadcast team, Nat Borchers. Nat, you played in games like this as a player. What's going through your mind moments before kickoff? If I'm a player in this game, I'm thinking momentum. We're just coming off a big result in Salt Lake, and you have to keep things going. The team did so well to do the defensive things right, to score the goals, but it's going to be about momentum, because if you have momentum and you're going into the playoffs, it's just so important. So checking those boxes, keeping that momentum going is going to be very, very important for the team today. Salt Lake can clinch a playoff spot with a win today. All also a draw or a loss and help. When we come back, Nat Borchers is with Timbers head coach Giovanni Severese. Kickoff also coming up from Providence Park. Four saves tonight against his former team. Santos in, Clark a punch. Polo brings it down, uses his speed to release. Jimenez trying to chase. Polo over to Blanco. A touchback towards Polo. Stepping off his line. Can they put it in? Yes! Polo does! His first for the Timbers! It's 2-1! That's such a wonderful break from the Timbers. That first touch from Polo, and then he's off. The head is down. He realizes he's got to get himself into a bit of space. How much he knew about where this pass was going to end up, doesn't matter. Into Blanco, and Blanco returning that pass into Polo, who just continues on. That pass there is going in now. It's a touch off the Columbus Crew defender, so it doesn't matter from there if Andy Polo's in an offside position because it comes off a Crew player, and Andy Polo 
He provides that finishing touch. Acrobatic. And enough to send that ball across the line. And didn't this man need that goal? His 18th match as a Portland Timber. His first goal was a big signing in the offseason. Acrobatic to put it in. And how things have changed. First 15 minutes wasn't looking great for the Timbers. But Kuzman and Polo and now all the momentum on the side of Portland. They have a 2-1 lead. I don't want to take credit away from players. I do wonder how much did Polo know about that pass in the Blanco? How much did Bad Blanco know about the pass? It's a Polo. It's the longest one, too, I've seen in a while. But it works. And credit to them because the Timbers, as soon as the crew got their goal, all of a sudden the levels, and that's the buzzword that I've been using the last couple days, it's the buzzword around the training ground, get the levels right, and the Timbers have gotten the levels up. It's like they needed 15 minutes to wake up tonight. It's a transition goal, too. I mean, how quick they've been on the, on the counterattack uh, has been impressive, especially uh, after that first 15 minutes. You're right. They've woken up. Uh, they've been crisp in their passing. The energy level has been very, very good, uh, and they've deserved that goal. Barnes floating it in. McBean. Clark comes out. Clark again. A big save and a penalty called. It was a mess in the back, and all of a sudden, the Colorado Rapids have earned a penalty. Well, just before McBean, you can see there's a shoulder that goes into the back of Ridgewell, goes to ground. And when Clark comes across, McBean getting a touch in. For me, as you look at it, that's a penalty coming through the back of McBean. But the big question mark is here was there a foul before on Liam Ridgewell? And from the initial angle, what you saw was McBean, his shoulder going into the back of Liam Ridgewell. Initially, for me, it looked like a foul. It can be reviewed and, of course, will be checked by the video assistant referee, Dave Gantar. As of now, it will be a penalty kick for the Rapids. And here comes the check. You can tell Liam Ridgewell asking him for it. So the hand to the ear, the finger to the ear from Drew Fisher means he's communicating with Dave Gantar, the video assistant referee, who is checking the play to see if there was a clear and obvious error. Here's another look. Well, if he just, right there, McBean running off Ridgewell. Was there a foul of McBean going into the back of Ridgewell? Now you look to the right of your screen. There's McBean going in. For me, there's contact there. For me, that's enough for a foul. Now Clark coming out, for me, that's a foul. But the referee has to look back at the situation between McBean and Ridgewell. And for me, that's a foul. So the goal penalty decision rather be disallowed. If it's determined that there was a clear and obvious error not to call a foul on Jack McBean for going into the back of Liam Ridgewell, then it would negate, obviously, Steve Clark bringing down McBean in the box. And they could, instead of giving the Rapids a penalty, could give the Timbers a restart, and this is a, a long check, as long as we've seen in a Timbers match this season. Take another look at it. Just to the right of your screen, McBean going through the back of Ridgewell. For me, that's a foul before the ball gets to the area where Clark's coming out. And that collision between Clark and McBean, that's a foul on Clark, of course, but you have to go one step earlier to that confrontation between McBean and Ridgewell. So after the long check, now you see Drew Fisher looking at the monitor. We can see what he's looking at. He's looking at that right there. Jack McBean going into the back of Liam Ridgewell to decide if he made a clear, if he made an error uh, not to call a foul. He's getting a lot of looks at the same thing over and over again. There's Liam Ridgewell. Another look you see at the top of your screen there. Angle from behind the goal. Now we get the decision from head referee Drew Fisher. So the foul on McBean before the penalty. Call on the field is uh, overturned. You could say reversed. And it will stay 1-0 for now.
as I said, correct decision. The contact from the beam going through the back of Ridgewell. Took a long time. Ross to, in your mind, got it right. Got to make sure. And so, for me, it was not a problem if you have to take an extra few seconds just to make absolutely certain in your mind the decision that you're making, you're confident with it, and it's the right one. The correct terminology, that was a clear and obvious error. And for me, that was a clear and obvious error. Castillo around Shara. Barnes couldn't get to it. It was just in front of him. Colorado, though, confident after well, they thought they earned the penalty. Ford sending it in over Calvert. Shara settling, tried to flick it over Castillo. Colorado keeps it. But that's exactly why we have VAR in the game now. A few years ago, we don't have VAR. That play get, doesn't get called. The, the, the call doesn't get made. Uh, Liam Ridgewell goes down. The referee misses it. The linesman misses it. They get a penalty, and it can change the game. But these are big moments of games that VAR is checking. That's why it's so important that we have it in the game now. Well, and on that, you don't have the benefit of looking back on plays, but of overseas goal that was disallowed in the first half. Barnes from distance troubling Steve Clark, who has to parry it over. And a corner kick coming now for Colorado. Change, change the position from Barnes, just dropping into the midfield. And him getting on the ball, you can see he just has a sight of cool. What a strike that is. You can see clearly from the angle behind the swerve and the whip on that ball. It was going into the top bin. Steve Clark called to action. Not very often in the first half. Big save there. Curled in towards Clark. He does well to catch. Steve Clark Ross making his first start for the Timbers. A guy well known by Timber supporters, of course, the opposing goalkeeper in the 2015 MLS Cup. We know what happened 27 seconds into that match. You were just spoke to him yesterday. He totally owns that moment, and, and he's happy to be here now, a member of the Timbers. I was so surprised with the humor and the class that he showed, having never chatted with Steve Clark before. And as you said, he owned it. And he said, for me, going back to that Columbus crew, v timbers mls cup final it was the most difficult game of his life but what he said after that error with diego valeri's goal he said i played a great game and he looked back at it he really did the shot stopping that he that he had in the match and the way he reacted and the way he grew into that match it was so impressive and when i asked him about his transition and, and coming to portland what did he think was their nerves and he said with a little bit of humor no nerves at all i knew the portland timbers fans would absolutely love me coming here <laughs> And so with that, you're blown away with a guy who had to shoulder all this responsibility. But what he said, it taught me that I can't compromise my play, that my play is about playing with my feet, and I can't wait to get out there in front of the Timber supporters to show them how good I am and what my game is, and not to change because of that moment. I own it, and I move forward. It just shows what a, what a strong mentality that this guy has, Ross. I, I think it's just been so much fun to, to listen to him, to how how he takes that that game and I was so impressed with his response after giving up that early goal a lot of players would have got in their shell a lot of players wouldn't have played the, the way he did but he made some big time saves in that MLS final, final after giving up the early goal very impressive to see that kind of response Timbers Army welcomed him last week with a C Clark is one of us chant Sebastian Blanco one of them oh Valeri with the head his tenth of the year second assist from Blanco tonight Well, he has done this so well tonight, Blanco. When he's getting on the ball, he's running at defenses. He's getting himself wide, getting himself isolated, and he's going with pace, with confidence. And when he picks his head up at the last second, he sees Valeri just making up the ground. This ball is bulleted towards Valeri, who has very little time to adjust, but doesn't he do well? He just leans back enough for Larry and gives his forehead enough contacts on the ball to steer it in to give the Timbers the lead soon now. 